Today's herb of the day is Fang Fang, which we have here. And you can see that it's produced a really beautiful orangey kind of clear liquid. And we today have brewed 45 grams of Fang Fang. Uh, Fang Fang was in the Shenlong Ban Cao as one of the original herbs that was there, and it was given the classification of an upper herb. So that puts Fang Fang into a perspective right away. The upper herbs from the Shenlong Ban Cao are herbs that we can take every single day. They're herbs that do not harm the body if we take them for a long time and can use them in large dosages. Um, so we just have to wrap our head around in a formula when we're using Fang Fang. Do we have that perspective that we're either being a little bit more heavy handed with it? Is this something we're prescribing to our patients for six months? Or do we think that great things are going to change overnight with Fang Fang? Uh, the Fang Fang was also written about in the Yaoxing Sabai Wei. That was the book of the herb qualities of 400 herbs. And uh, the Yaoxing Sabai Wei purposefully created a succinct 16 character description of 400 herbs. And the Yaoxing Sabai Wei tells us that Fang Fang is sweet and warm. It is able to treat or kind of expel dizziness from the head. When there is B and pain, so B syndrome um, and pain in the bones and in the tendons, and that it treats all kind of wind and lockjaw. So in terms of a very small, um, succinct kind of thing to memorize, that was the point of the Yaoxing Sabai Wei, is how can I give you key points to memorize instead of something like the Ban Cao Gang Lu that's so many pages, that's what uh, we are told about. Fang Fang. Um, now, the Ban Cao Gang Lu talks about Fang Fang, and as usual, it, there's always going to be one flavor in nature that's indicated sort of as the official flavor in nature as decided by the author of the Ban Cao Gang Lu, but then there's going to be documentations of discrepancies or kind of differing opinions. And so the Ban Cao Gang Lu also says that Fang Fang is sweet and warm and it's not toxic. However, um, the Mingyi Bielu, which was the book that followed the Shenlong Ban Cao, says actually Fang Feng is acrid. Another scholar later wrote they felt that the Fang Feng they were tasting was mildly cold. Zhang Yan Su said it is acrid and sweet and that the qi and the flavor of Fang Feng are both very thin. Uh, Zhang Yan Su was one of the people who really took this concept of not just flavor in nature, but thickness or thinness. Not simply is it warm or is it acrid, but how acrid, how lingeringly acrid, how warm, how cold. And so he gives us the sentence that they're both very thin in quality, both the qi and the flavor, and therefore Fang Fang is able to float or ascend in the body, making it very yang in action. If we think about the difference between floating, floating tends to be that it goes in and it starts here. You know, something that floats gets to the top very quickly, whereas something that ascends, it has that indication that it has to kind of come from below to move upward. So those are things that we can think about with Fang Fang. Um, in the Ban Cao Gang Lu, after the flavor and nature of Fang Fang is discussed, there's a whole list of things that talks about Fang Fang in action. And the actions are discussed in combination with other herbs. So for example, it says Fang Fang with Huang Qi. When you combine Huang Qi and Fang Fang, it enhances the actions of treating illness. And therefore, those are two uh, herbs in the um, when you read about herbs that are supposed to be used together, they're kind of mutually beneficial, or they counteract, or they are mutually, um, they kind of negate each other. These, these two herbs, Huang Qi and Fang Fang, are said to be mutually beneficial. So they make the action of both the Huang Qi and the Fang Fang stronger. Um, we're also told that Fang Fang with scallions is able to flow the entire body. Fang Fang with Zixia and Gao Ban can treat wind. Fang Fang with Dong Wei, Bai Xiao, and Yang Qi Shi will treat wind in the organs, especially for females. So this is an important discussion to talk about because today we're going to see some of these actions when we open up a Materia Medica and we just read Fang Fang. We're going to see unblocks the body, treats wind, maybe is good for females um, and can get wind out of the organs, but it's not to be overlooked that these discussions are, are coming from Fang Fang with this herb does this, Fang Fang with this herb does that. Uh, 
when we read about these herbs, we have to immediately stop and think, in order to get this action that they're talking about, what would we need to pair it with? And not to believe that it's solely the action of the herb on its own. Um, you know, the flavor and the nature of every plant is going to affect the gene, it's going to affect the body. But often, uh, we need to use a combination of things for successful results. The Ban Sao Gangmu is really the source of where we're going to get most of our bullet points about herbs. And again, it's going to have some bullet points or key actions. And some of those are, um, we're told that Fang Fang treats wind and dizziness, painful bee in the joints. And lo and behold, that's what we were just told um, from the Yaoxing Sabai Wei and from the Shenong Ban Sao. The Ban Sao Gangmu also says that Fang Fang can treat pain in the ribs or twitches in the hands and the feet. Any kind of Shu Lao or this idea of sort of overwork and weakness in men, Fang Fang can course the pulses of the five Zong organs. It can treat dampness in the Jing Luo and it can disperse liver chi that has gathered. Um, and again, this list of actions I think is, is mostly what we believe to be um, what is in our books for Fang Fang today. And oftentimes people will say Fang Fang is sort of the king of a wind. It treats all types of wind. Uh, but we have to return to our flavor and nature and remember that one scholar said that the Fang Fang was sweet, one scholar said that it was acrid, and then another person said, wait, sweet and acrid. Um, when we're talking about wind, if wind is because of deficiency in the body, basically that idea of a wind tunnel, that the blood is deficient and therefore uh, in the channels there's a hollow that's able to allow wind to happen, then we would want to turn to sweet flavored herbs because sweet is going to both slow down the wind and actually fill in the blood or nourish the blood and therefore the wind would stop because there's no hollow space. If we have wind because of blockages or because of damp, then actually we want to use something that's much more spicy, uh, that we want to course and flow. And so to say all types of wind uh, is not as accurate as uh, thinking about what wind does the patient have, why do they have wind, and therefore do we want a sweet herb, do we want an acrid herb, do we want a bitter herb, or something like that. Um, even in the actions of the Ban Sao Gang Mu, as it lists these kinds of things that seem like it's, they're pretty uh, real injuries, pain in the ribs, twitching, um, coursing the pulses, these kinds of things, the Ban Sao Gang Mu reminds us that Fang Fang is an upper herb and it says if you take Fang Fang for a long time it will lighten the body and calm the spirit. When we look at Fang Fang in, in, in terms of the heaviness, the lightness of the plant, we have these slices that are really a little bit, very slightly squishy, so it has some sort of yin left into it. Uh, and it's a little bit light in my hand. It's not particularly dense. Uh, it, I don't feel like, even with this much in there, I don't feel like there's much in my hand. If I didn't know what had been put in my hand, I might think just of some seeds or something like that. Uh, so that really helps us understand why are we told that Fang Fang can float or ascend. It's very light in quality in terms of the physical plant. In terms of the, the tasting, um, this Fang Fang has a really lovely smell to it. It almost smells like, like an herbal tea that you would make maybe with some, some sort of spice that I can't tell you exactly what spice is in it, but it has that smell of sort of roastedness, this lightness, and you can see the color of the water. Um, and what's also interesting about this is you can see how plump some of those pieces of Fang Fang have become the difference in size, I don't know, does that translate on the camera? The difference in size from these little kind of nuggets to pieces that you can tell that the plant stock was, you know, much, much more like this. The flavor to me is uh, quite remarkably sweet, very, very lovely and pleasant. Um, and, and a couple of us have come back for refills of Fang Fang, which says a lot given that the herbs that we've tasted up to this point, very rarely are we desiring to then drink it. Uh, and this is 45 grams. So we brewed this in a double walled thermos uh, with boiling water. And this actually only sat for eight hours, six hours, six hours. Uh, so we have this rich flavor uh, from 45 grams and it being steeped in that kind of munfa, the, the closed vessel steeping. 
the sweetness on a scale of one to ten, I would say that this is probably even an eight out of ten sweet. It's really noticeably sweet, but it's a clean sweet. It doesn't seem like it makes my mouth sticky. Underneath it has a very light acrid taste. I would say that the acrid is more like two out of ten. You can feel this ascending nature. You can feel this slightly movingness. It doesn't have the thick viscosity. You know, sweet is going to, typically it's going to go in and have that slowing action, and this doesn't have that. So uh, I would say that this plant is much more like the, the person who said, absolutely, it is both, but the sweet is much more pronounced than the acrid is. So in terms of actions, what does that mean? Um, we can look back at the kinds of wind where it does need to be filled in a little bit. This feng feng feels like it's going to moisten the body. It's going to flow. It may uh, create a little bit more moving down than staying put the way that a sweet flavor would. Um, and it also tastes quite warming. Uh, a couple of us were saying that we could feel a, a, almost a tingling on the arms for a while after I drank it. I felt like my nose was sort of tingly and itchy. So it has a very light, um, palpable, ascending feeling. I feel a little bit warmer in my torso this way than I did after, uh, before drinking it. So that is Fong Fong. I invite you to go back and look at the actions in the book and ponder um, how you are using it. I would say that this Fong Fong is much less likely to forcefully unblock or to course things, uh, but really to sort of slow down wind and create gentle movement in the body.